Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Jake Pimentel from Pime Technology, and today I have a highly requested video from my Twitter account. I posted a tweet that shows a T-Mobile speed test with two gigabits per second on T-Mobile 5G UC, which if you didn't know is the T-Mobile N41 signal. Everybody had a bunch of questions and was requesting to see a video of the tower, what's the backhaul on the tower, and show live speed testing. So today, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I'm gonna begin by giving a little bit of background on this T-Mobile tower. So this T-Mobile tower was actually just turned on uh, about two to three weeks ago. Previously in this area right here, there was pretty much little to no T-Mobile service. So this was a new co-location for T-Mobile. This is a pretty rural area. Um, T-Mobile is expanding a lot in this area. They previously had no service pretty much anywhere in this circle right here, but they've come a very long way. They have another new site going online, which is closer to my house in this area. And um, when that goes live, I'll be sure to do coverage on that as well. But um, it's a new tower, and therefore it could pr probably use some optimization still, but uh, it's still performing really great uh, for only being turned on two weeks ago. It has all of T-Mobile's Spectrum portfolio minus C-band and millimeter wave, which I, I don't expect, but this is a pretty standard setup for T-Mobile. I'll show you pictures of the tower here in a moment. All right, so at the top of the cell site, we have Verizon's equipment, and you can see the Samsung gear there with the uh, massive MIMO for C-band and uh, the rest of the equipment for band two, band 66, and band five, and band 13. We also have AT&T in the middle with 4x4 MIMO, band two, band 12, band five, band 66, and 4x4 MIMO, which is Ericsson gear. And then we have T-Mobile at the bottom, which is also Ericsson gear, and they have N41, band 41, Band 71, N71, Band 12, Band 2, and Band 66. For backhaul on this cell site, it is using AT&T, as you can see in the picture there. This is a little surprising since AT&T does not offer any sort of home internet options, business internet options. They are not a provider for internet in this area at all, but my guess is that a long time ago, they had to run fiber up to this cell site themselves because there were no other providers that had done so. So now they are just one of the backhaul providers for this cell site, and that's who T-Mobile is using. All right, so ignore the 5GUW uh, icon. I'm not sure why this is doing that, but as you can see, this is T-Mobile N41 on the Pixel 7. So we'll go ahead and test it out. This is using 100 megahertz of N41 plus 80 megahertz of N41 5G standalone. And as you can see, we're easily pulling two gigabits per second. And then we also have an unloaded ping of 13 milliseconds. And then we have a loaded ping of 54 milliseconds for the downlink. And then for the uplink, a loaded ping of 204, which is excellent. So I'm sure you all are probably wondering, I'm going to show you Verizon and at and speed here as well. They're all on the same exact cell site as you can see. So here's Verizon. Um, the site is fully upgraded. They just have not activated any of the equipment yet um, or the new upgrade. So it's just band 13 only. Um, it was The upgrades were completed probably about a month ago, uh, maybe a month and a half. So I expect them to turn that on sometime within uh, the next few weeks here or month. But um, as you can see, they really need to turn these upgrades on very soon because the downlink is getting busy. And this is still 749 in the morning. So Verizon definitely needs to light these upgrades up as soon as possible. But once they do, I'm sure the site will perform great for them. So here's AT&T. There is no actual 5G Plus here, I don't think. Uh, I think the phone is just, uh, the iPhone has an issue, like the Google Pixel does, as you could see, uh, has an issue where the icon gets stuck. Um, but AT&T has band two, band 66, band 12, and band 14 with four by four MIMO on here. So it's performing pretty well. Uh, there's also N5 at 10 megahertz. So you can see that uplink is really good. 
because of that N5. So AT&T performs great here. All right, so one of the critiques that many people who do network testing get is that you're too close to the tower while you're standing right in front of it. I mean, most people don't stand in front of the tower and that is very, very true. So today I'm going to show you a couple of different, uh, actually two different spots away from the tower. So this first one is about one and a half miles from the cell site that gets two gigabits per second. And as you can see, the signal on the phone's about negative 105, which is about which is pretty much two bars on any other phone besides Samsung phones, which for some reason like to show four bars instead of two bars. So it's like not the strongest signal, but not the worst signal ever. Uh, let me just make sure I got the right server for Connecticut here. And then we'll go ahead and see what the speeds are like at negative 105 dBm. So about two bars here. And we're easily pulling one gigabit per second, about 1.5 miles, give or take, away from this cell site. So that's just incredible. It looks like it actually switched back to non-standalone, but as you can see, the signal is still about negative 106. And then we also have band two at 20 megahertz and band 66 at 20 megahertz as well. So, and the performance is just incredible. So here's where I am. You can see me, the little blue thing right there. And then this right here is the tower that I have marked. If we click on the tower, I have a marked C band for Verizon. It's not activated yet, but it should be soon. And as you can see, we are about 1.6 miles away, 1.5 miles away from the site. And I'll run one more speed test for you. The latency is very, very good too. 14 milliseconds. And what we need to pay attention to is, as well as the loaded and unloaded pings, which are sub 300, which is not super common for 4G LTE signals. So these definitely are 5G latencies. Now, could it get better in the future? Absolutely. I think there's a lot of room for improvement. There's always room for improvement. But this is a huge step in the right direction. These will become common unloaded and loaded latency. Finally, I did some testing very, very far away from the cell site. Uh, again, to those who criticize being so close to the tower, I, again, I think that's a very, very fair point. Uh, so as you can see on Cell Mapper, I'm connected to that same tower. And as you can see on Google Maps, I measured my distance out there and uh, about 4.7 miles. So almost five miles there. And as you will see, I'm still pulling 800 megabits per second. That is just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. We have never seen anything like this before in the cellular industry. It's, it's, it's completely unprecedented. But yeah, see, and, and it's, it's totally repeatable too. Um, the latency is still very low, just absolutely amazing. And uh, here you can see very rural area. It's basically the woods. You can see the hill back there. That's where the cell tower is. But yeah, pretty crazy. Still pulling 800 megabits per second, four miles away. All right, so that's gonna be a wrap to this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those two gigabit per second speeds. Pretty crazy. I think it really shows of what's to come from 5G, even if you're not seeing those speeds yet. In your area, I don't see those speeds in most areas that I travel to. In the future, you definitely will see speeds like that once the carriers upgrade their backhaul and increase the amount of spectrum that they're using. But still pretty cool to see even today at the end of 2022. I will definitely make an update video once my new home site goes live for T-Mobile. I pretty much have no service where I live, so it'll be great to finally have service there along with Verizon and AT&T, which already have service there. It was pretty crazy to see uh, the speeds up close to the site, two gigabits per second, 1.5 miles from the site, about one gigabit per second, and then 4.6 miles away from the site, still pulling anywhere from six to 800 megabits per second. That's pretty incredible and shows the true potential of N41 and mid-band 5G. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like up down below. 
Also, definitely subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you'll be updated when I upload any new videos. I plan to make more videos on my channel. I know I haven't made a video in a while. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Hope you guys have a great day. Smile because you and technology are amazing. And peace out.